Saturn V quarterly film report number eight covers progress during the period September, October, and November 1964. Throughout the quarter, Boeing and Marshall continued S1C stage development, manufacturing, and testing. At Marshall, Boeing successfully completed full pressure hydrostatic testing of the S1C test fuel tank after resolving the test equipment problems encountered last quarter. This was followed by successful LOX tunnel testing. Early in the quarter, Marshall personnel during a routine inspection discovered weld micro cracks on S1CT and S1CS assemblies previously manufactured. After detailed investigations and studies, Marshall resolved the problem by micro shaving all weld beads. Necessary action is being taken to prevent recurrence of the problem. Despite the welding problem, S1C stage manufacturing and assembly continued at a satisfactory pace. Mating of the S1CT forward skirt, LOX tank, and intertank section was completed. On November 2nd, this major assembly was moved from the vertical assembly building to the horizontal assembly area where final S1CT assembly will take place. S1CT thrust structure manufacture was completed with installation of heat shield panels and locks and fuel duct supports. The structure was then moved into the vertical assembly building and joined to the S1CT fuel tank. The unit will be transferred to the horizontal assembly area for final mating to the LOX tank assembly early next quarter. S1CS cylindrical skin assembly and bulkhead fabrication continued this quarter. The forward LOX bulkhead for this ground test stage is now being built at Marshall. The original bulkhead fabricated by Boeing was rejected at Michoud because of unacceptable welding. Boeing is attempting to improve its welding techniques to prevent this problem from recurring. The first enter tank for the S1CS test program built by Boeing Michoud has been placed in Marshall's new load test tower and preparations are underway for structural testing. Bulkhead fabrication for the first two flight stages, S1C1 and S1C2, is progressing steadily. Construction of Marshall's S1C static test stand is virtually complete with hold-down arms installed this quarter. At Marshall's Michoud operations, Boeing continued work on the S1CD dynamic test stage thrust structure, base heat shield support for the thrust structure, and intertank. Assembly of the stage bulkheads also continued. Other S1C component work by Boeing included assembly of the forward skirt for the first flight stage and chemical cleaning of the Y rings for the second flight stage. Major facilities construction at Michu included work on the stage test facility, the high pressure test facility, and the vertical assembly building with its hydrostatic test tower and final assembly tower. At the S-2 static test facility at Santa Susana, North American Aviation Space and Information Systems Division directed major activity during September and October toward preparations for the initial firing of a single engine of the battleship test stage. This activity included the installation of the center J-2 engine on the battleship and installation and checkout of ground support equipment and systems development device at the test stand and in the control center. Systems checkout and cryogenics testing were completed. Continuity checks were made and the integrated checkout or sequential countdown conducted. Culminating these months of intensive preparation, on November 9th, the S-2 battleship first ignition was successfully accomplished. In the vertical assembly building of S&ID's Seal Beach facility, manufacturing of S2S structural test stage continued during the report period. The common bulkhead completed last quarter was mated to the liquid hydrogen tank cylinder and the assembly was installed in the hydrostatic test station where hydrostatic testing was successfully accomplished. In late October, the aft LOX bulkhead for S2S failed during its in-process component hydrostatic testing
prior to being welded to the LOX tank. The character of the failure was a fracture which propagated through the apex sections of eight of the 12 gore segments of the bulkhead. An extensive investigation by Marshall and SNID revealed that the failure was caused primarily by manufacturing defects and inadequate detail inspection. Corrective action has been initiated and a replacement bulkhead for S2S will be available in December. Assembly of the first S2 stage transporter was completed at the American Machine and Foundry Corporation at York, Pennsylvania. Acceptance testing was completed satisfactorily and the vehicle shipped to S&ID's Seal Beach facility where functional testing and mobility runs were performed. The transporter will be used to move early ground test stages. At Douglas Aircraft Company's Sacramento test area, preparations for the first S-4B battleship hot firing were underway during September. Fuel leak checks and pneumatic lines checks were performed. Technicians checked engine bleed gas igniters and the water and propellant distribution complex. An engine diffuser water test was also run. J2 engine thrust chamber chill down tests were successfully conducted in early October. On November 7th, the first hot firing was cut off prior to main stage by a gas generator over temperature command. A second firing on November 24th was a successful one second duration test. 10 and 50 second firings are scheduled in December. At SACTO's gamma complex, the attitude control engines for the S-4B auxiliary propulsion system were installed in September. A series of single and multiple engine first phase development firings was successfully conducted during October. Also at SACTO, DAC continued preparing beta test stand number three for installing the facility's checkout stage for propellant loading tests in early March. At Douglas's Huntington Beach facility, assembly and checkout of the S-4B dynamic test stage has been completed and the stage is being prepared for shipment to the Marshall Center in early December. The original all system stage, which has been redesignated the facility's checkout stage, underwent cleaning and insulation this quarter. The stage will be used for propellant loading tests at SACTO and facility's checkout at Kennedy Space Center. Components from the original facilities checkout stage have been reallocated for use on an S-4B sectional mock-up, which will be shipped to Marshall for use on an overall Saturn V simulator. Fabrication and assembly of components for the first Saturn V S-4B flight stage, 501, got underway at Douglas Santa Monica this quarter. At the Air Research Test Facility in Phoenix, Arizona, pressure testing to failure of S-4B propellant loading flex hoses was conducted this quarter for Douglas. At the Edwards rocket engine test site in California, Rocketdyne began flight rating tests of the F-1 engine on November 16th. The tests are progressing satisfactorily and will be completed by December 31st. Operational readiness of the two new F-1 production engine test stands at Edwards was marked by ceremonies held on October 9th. The event was climaxed by a full duration firing. As part of the continuing effort to improve F-1 engine reliability, Rocketdyne has designed and tested a new tight-fit LOX impeller spline coupling. Test results indicate the new design with reduction of turbo pump RPM will eliminate LOX pump explosions. Testing of the Mark 10 turbo pump with shot peened LOX impellers indicated a tenfold increase in the number of cycles to failure. As a result, all existing turbo pumps have been retrofitted with the shot peened impeller.
Production of F-1 engines at Rocketdyne's Canoga Park manufacturing area progressed steadily during the quarter. This facility is capable of handling the final assembly and checkout of six F-1 engines simultaneously. Progress is continuing toward an early 1965 completion of Rocketdyne's manufacturing building number four. At Santa Susana, the two-position test stand Bravo-1 has been converted to an F-1 engine components test facility providing for longer duration tests than were formerly possible. One position will be used for gas generator testing and the other for heat exchanger tests. At the Marshall Center, propulsion system testing of the second F-1 production engine begun last quarter continued during this report period. The first production engine is undergoing minor rework in preparation for installation in Marshall's new F-1 engine static test stand in January. The first firing in the new stand is scheduled for early 1965. During a static firing of engine J2005 on September 19th at Santa Susana, a gas generator explosion occurred. As a result, Rocketdyne built this mock-up of the J2 pneumatic control system, including the gas generator, to evaluate possible solutions to the problem. Analysis of test data on one proposed solution connecting the gas generator valve cast to the control pressure point indicated this would be successful in preventing one possible cause of the explosion. Other research and development activity on the J2 engine by Rocketdyne this quarter included flame resistance testing of the connector for the flexible armut harness now used for all J2 electrical control and instrumentation harness wiring. In this test, the system did not short out for six and one half minutes under a 2000 degree flame. J-2 engine preliminary flight rating tests were successfully completed November 25th by Rocketdyne at its Santa Susana test site. The J-2 flight rating test is scheduled to be conducted early in 1965. Following a final test, vertical test stand 3A at Santa Susana was closed for extensive renovation. Close coupling of propellant tanks and improved vacuum jacketing on the hydrogen lines are expected to provide a better engine start condition and more effective altitude simulation for a flight rating. At the Marshall Center, construction of the J-2 engine test facility is approximately 95% finished with completion due in January. The first redesigned Saturn V instrument unit structure was delivered to Marshall by General Dynamics, Fort Worth, Texas, this quarter. The structure will be used for the dynamic test unit. Vibration testing for evaluation of IU cold plates manufactured by four vendors, Avco, North American, Solar Aircraft, and Aronca, was in progress at Marshall during the quarter. Vendor selection will be made following completion of evaluation testing. As negotiations continued with international business machines for the IU mission contract, IBM personnel are already at work in their new Huntsville engineering laboratories. One of the most significant activities in which IBM is participating is preparation for the flight systems test program, a thermal vacuum test of the entire IU under simulated space flight conditions to be performed in an environmental chamber at Douglas Aircraft's Huntington Beach facility. To reduce costly duplication of testing facilities, special test equipment, which will be required both at Huntsville and Huntington Beach, is being installed in trailers, which can be air transported between these locations. IBM personnel this quarter also performed functional testing of the IU radar altimeter using an MSFC furnished test set. Another test involved a circuit analysis of the IU's remote digital sub-multiplexer. Breadboard circuit modules, which duplicate production hardware in component utilization and location, 
are tested in a temperature chamber to detect possible circuit malfunctions resulting from component tolerance accumulations. Also in progress this quarter were design evaluation studies on a newly designed channel unit for the IU telemetry system. All these operations are providing valuable experience as IBM phases into complete responsibility for a mission-qualified Saturn V instrument unit. The construction phase of the Saturn V dynamic test stand at Marshall is complete except for installation of small items such as bracketry and grating. Components of the second S1C transporter delivered by Fruhoff of Los Angeles in early November have been assembled at Marshall. At the Saturn V ground support equipment test facility, construction is virtually complete except for installation of cryogenic lines. All technical systems equipment has been delivered and installation is about 50% finished with completion due in January. Overall construction of the Saturn V barge dock and loading facility on the Tennessee River is practically complete. At Marshall's Mississippi test facility, construction proceeded on the test complex comprising the S1C dual position static test stand and the two S2 static test stands the laboratory and engineering complex, which contains the office and administration building, the data handling center, and the telephone and terminal building, and the support services complex, including such facilities as the emergency services building, MTF warehouse, site maintenance building, and central heating plant. In summary, September, October, and November 1964 were months of highly significant achievements in the Saturn V program. Assembly of S1C stages progressed steadily. Major milestones were reached in the upper stage programs with both the first S2 battleship hot firing and the first S4B battleship hot firing. Significant progress was also achieved on the engine programs. The instrument unit and general support facilities build up.